Okay, so by a student request, let's do a civil engineering surveying question. Specifically, when we're looking at setting up a survey using total station. So for this example, we're told we have a surveyor that sets up a total station four feet above a bench benchmark at A that has an elevation of 825.50 feet, a zenith angle and a slope distance of 93 minutes 30, I'm sorry, 93 degrees 30 minutes 20 seconds and the 655.90 feet respectively are measured to a reflector that is set up 4.25 feet above a hub at point B. So what's happening here? We have a zenith angle and a slope distance. This is our zenith angle. This is our slope distance. And these are measured to a reflector set up 4.25 feet above a hub at point B. The elevation in feet of the hub at point B is most nearly what? So this is quite complicated if you do not see the picture here. So I recommend to ignore before like this picture I just denoted it and drew it to help us out. But I believe on the FE you might not be given a picture. So you have to visualize this specifically when you're doing a total station survey. So we have to understand that what we mean by a total station survey. So this is a more automated type of survey. You use a electronic device measuring instrument, I believe. And so it's very common on construction sites and it's accuracy and precision is very high. It can be done very fast and we know the readings are going to be automatically corrected for temperature and pressure differences. So it's a type of auto it's more automated and easier to use. That's why it's recommended specifically for construction sites. So on that note, we have to come back to the question at hand here. So we have four feet above a benchmark at A. What this means is this is our benchmark at A. We are four feet above this. So let's write that down. We are four feet, okay, good. And we know this benchmark has an elevation of 825.50 feet. So let's write this elevation. So the elevation at A, we know is going to be 825.50 feet. Okay, good. So we've taken care of this number and this number. We know we have a zenith angle. So a zenith angle is going to start at, I believe, the north. We start at the north and we go clockwise. So our zenith angle in this case is more than 90 degrees. It's going to be 93 degrees, 30 minutes, 20 seconds. So this is our zenith angle. I'll use green for that is 93 degrees, 30 minutes. 20 seconds so we have our zenith angle and we have the 655.90 distance this distance is arrived at by using this total station and specifically when you use this instrument this electric device it's a measuring it's a type of automated device that you use for total stations it'll give you this angle they give us a zenith angle using the instrument and this distance the distance is gonna be this this is the distance that's given for us so we have this distance of 655.90 feet okay we've taken care of these two numbers and these are measured to a reflector so our reflector is gonna be this instrument at, at B and it is set up 4.25 feet above a hub at point B so our hub is going to be this point. So that distance to the reflector is going to be this distance. This is the height of that reflector. It's 4.25 above the hub at point B. So it's going to be 4.25 feet. Okay. So that's everything visualized. So again, I recommend you do this by not looking at this picture, by trying to visualize yourse yourself and denoting that on your paper like drawing it drawing the 
picture on your paper without using this image. So we know, I'll just denote our hub here. So I'll use red for our hub. We want to find the elevation at the hub at point B in feet. So we know in order to find this, we need, what we have to do is account for the elevation here. Typically when you're looking at these surveying questions, you start at your elevation of the benchmark. Then what we're going to do is add the four feet. Then we have to somehow come back down to the reflector to this point. And I'm going to say we start at the elevation of the ground at the benchmark. We add the four feet. We're at this point, right? So we're at this point now. Then I have to go down to that reflector. So we're going to have to go down and subtract this distance. So we have to subtract that distance. Then we subtract this distance of 4.25 to get to the elevation at B. Again, we start at the elevation of the benchmark at A. We go up the four feet, right? The height of our instrument at A is four feet. Elevation of benchmark. Add this height, then we go across. We have to go down to this reflector, so we need this distance. And I'm going to denote this distance as this. You see how we're going to form a triangle here? It's going to be this distance. So we need this distance, and I'll call this distance, since this is point B, I'll call this point B prime. I'll just denote that as B prime. So we know from actually no that's a bad denotation so let's just call this distance y i'll just call it y we need this distance because to get this elevation at b what the question asks us we take this elevation plus the four feet we go across so four feet minus y minus the 4.25 will give us the elevation at b so let's write that down to get the elevation at b this would equal to the elevation at A. So elevation at A plus our four feet. Okay. Then we have to subtract this Y. So minus Y minus the 4.25. So the elevation at A we know is this, right? That's known. So our only unknown here is this y distance. So let's find this y distance by using the triangle rules, right? Pythagorean, I think it's the sine rule in this case, right? So because we know this is our zenith angle, so it's we have to do an extra step is we have to find this angle here. I'll call this angle theta. So we know this total angle here is our zenith angle, but we know this is 90 degrees, right? So to find theta, theta is going to equal to this total zenith angle, the ZAB, minus 90 degrees. That will give us our theta angle. So before we do this, we know we need our zenith angle in degrees. So I'm going to convert the 93 degrees, 30 minutes, 20 seconds to degrees. So let's convert our zenith angle, AB, to degrees, to degrees. And in order to do this, we know our zenith angle, AB, we have to take our 93 minute, uh, 93 degrees, sorry. We keep that number, that's fine. Now the 30 minutes, what you do is take 30 divided by 60. Because we know there's 60 minutes in one hour. So let me just denote this here. On the upper right, we know one hour is one degree, right? We know there's 60 minutes in one hour. And we know there's going to be 3,600 seconds in one hour. So in one hour. So that's why I divided by 60. There's 60 minutes in one hour. And one hour is one degree. At the end of the day, this whole thing will convert us to degrees. That's good for the minutes 30 minutes then we do the 20 seconds and we divide that by 3600 so now if you do the math for that we should get our angle of the 
the zenith angle in just degrees, it's around 93.506 degrees. Or you can use your TI-836X Pro and that quickly does it. And the old TIs as well. They should do it using the calculator quickly. So that's that. That's our angle. But let's go back now to finding this angle, which is what we need. We need this angle in order to find this Y using the sine rule. So the angle theta is going to be this angle. So 93.506, which is our zenith angle in degrees, minus 90 degrees. We solve for our angle theta. And if you solve for that, you should get around 3... 0.506 degrees so we have our angle theta now we can use this angle theta of 3.506 degrees to solve for y we know we're using the sine rule sine rule is opposite over the hypotenuse right the hypotenuse is this distance so sine rule we do sine of theta is going to equal to the opposite which is our y over the hypotenuse which is our 655 655.90 feet so we know our angle here is 3.506 so you can solve for y y would equal to the sine of sorry let's do 655 0.90 sine of that angle which is 3.506 so now we solve for y and y equals to about I got 40.11 feet so now we have y and again we're not done let's just at the end apply this what we Denote it at the very beginning. We take the elevation at A plus 4 feet minus Y minus 4.25. So the elevation at B, which is what we're solving for, is going to equal to the elevation at A, which is 825.50 feet. Then we take plus the 4 feet, 4 feet minus our y our y is this 40.11 so minus 40.11 feet then we subtract the 4.25 feet so you should you, if you solve for this i think when i did the math i got around seven 85.14 feet so this should be our answer and I think it will be C that's all let me know if you have questions and don't forget to subscribe and like and thank you